In the previous video, we observed ethanol burning at the macroscopic scale. Well, in this video, we have one major goal. We want to be able to use a chemical reaction to explain what happens to matter and energy when ethanol burns. First, let's review what we saw at the macroscopic scale. We observed that the ethanol lost mass when it burned. And that means that molecules escaped from the ethanol while it was burning. We also saw that the gases that came out of the ethanol turned the BTB acidic, as indicated by the color change from green to yellow. And we saw that when we burned the ethanol, energy was released in the form of heat, light, and movement. These observations led us to conclude that carbon dioxide and water came out of the burning flame during the reaction, and in addition, the ethanol and oxygen were pulled up into the flame. The energy that we saw coming out as movement, light, and heat must have been in the ethanol to begin with, and we called that potential energy. But we're here to explain what happens to the atoms and molecules as the ethanol burns. Remember from our video on size and scale that objects of this size are called nanoscopic. Let's quickly review a few rules of molecular bonding. Atoms form connections that we call bonds. Hydrogen forms one bond, oxygen forms two bonds, and carbon forms four bonds. And this is why in most molecular modeling kits, hydrogen has got one connection, oxygen has two connections, and carbon has got four connections. And some combinations of these connections form high energy bonds, such as carbon-carbon bonds and carbon-hydrogen bonds. As we did with soda fizzing, let's start off with just writing the chemical reaction in words like this. Here we see only the reactants. Let's also write out the molecular formulas so we can see which atoms are present in each molecule. Here's the molecular formula for ethanol, and here it is for oxygen. We can also build these molecules using our molecular kit. We can see from the formula that ethanol has two carbons, six hydrogens, don't forget about this one hanging off the end, and one oxygen. So, let's use our rules of molecular bonding to build a molecule of ethanol. Now, sometimes this takes a little bit of trial and error, but as long as we stick to our rules of molecular bonding, we should end up with a molecule that's at least possible. We're going to make sure that each carbon has got four bonds. We'll also attach our hydrogens to the end of each available bond, since hydrogen bonds only one time each. Now with this last hydrogen, we have to be kind of careful, because if we attach it also to the carbons, that means there's no bonds left to attach our oxygen. So we have to figure out another way to deal with this. We can solve this problem by first attaching our oxygen to this bond, and with the remaining bond left on oxygen, there we can attach our hydrogen. There's ethanol. A molecule of oxygen gas should be a little simpler because it's only two atoms and each oxygen atom needs two bonds, the only way we can achieve that is with what's called a double bond, and we're doing that with these little bendy sticks. So there's our molecule of oxygen. Finally, we can also draw the molecular structures, and this is really easy to do once we've built our molecules using our molecular modeling kit. If we revisit our model for a moment, we'll see that we've taken care of the reactants, or the inputs, but we still have to deal with the products, or the outputs, and that's carbon dioxide and water. So let's do the right side of our reaction, the products, in the same way that we did the left side, the reactants. We can write them out in words. We can also write out the chemical formulas. We can build them using the same bonding rules that we used for ethanol and oxygen. Finally, we can draw out their molecular structures based on the models we built. So here, we've represented all the different ways that we can show the reactants on the left turning into the products at the right, which is a great step in the right direction for explaining what's going on in this reaction. But you might notice something's not quite right here. 
To make this easier to see, let's just look at our molecular models. One thing to recognize with chemical reactions is that we're really talking about a before and after situation. The chemicals that exist before the reaction takes place we call the reactants, while the chemicals that exist after the chemical reaction has taken place we call the products. Do you think you can see what is wrong with the way that this reaction is represented here? So let's study this reaction more carefully. <laughs> so to the left we see what we started with, our reactants. Let's go ahead and count up all the atoms in our reactants. We have two carbon atoms, six hydrogen atoms, and three oxygen atoms. And if we look at our products, we see that we have one carbon atom, two hydrogen atoms, and three oxygen atoms. And this is not good, because the numbers don't match. And this violates an important rule. Matter can't be created or destroyed! So that's something we need to fix right now. We're going to do what's called balancing a reaction. Our one goal in balancing a chemical reaction is to get the atoms of each element on the left to be equal to the atoms of each element on the right, because you can't create or destroy atoms. Let's try balancing carbon. Can you figure out how to balance the number of carbons in this reaction? The easiest way to fix the number of carbons is to just add a carbon dioxide to the reactants. The reactants and the products each now have the same number of carbons. That means that carbon is now balanced, but the hydrogen and oxygen atoms are still not balanced. Let's go ahead and deal with hydrogen now. Take a moment to see if you can't figure out how to balance the hydrogen atoms. It's pretty easy to see that the products are missing hydrogens. So we can add a couple of waters to the products. Now the number of hydrogens in the products is equal to the number of hydrogens in the reactants. And that means that this reaction's hydrogens are now balanced. Can you spot the element that is not balanced yet? The element that's not balanced yet is oxygen. That's the red one. Notice that there are way too many oxygens in the products, but not enough in the reactants. What would you have to do in order to get the oxygen atoms to balance? Well, since there are seven oxygens in the products, but only three oxygens in the reactants, we have to add four oxygen atoms to the reactants. That means two oxygen molecules. All right, now that we've added four more oxygen atoms, let's count everything up. In our reactants, we have two carbons, six hydrogens, and seven oxygens. And in our products, we have two carbons, six hydrogens, and seven oxygens. This is fantastic, because it means that we have balanced our chemical reaction. We know exactly how many atoms of each element come in and out of this chemical reaction. There is a way to demonstrate that we've correctly balanced our chemical reaction. We can take the total molecules in our reactants and rearrange them. Look here. We took the reactants without adding or subtracting any atoms and rearranged them to create the products. That's all a chemical reaction is, really. It's just a rearrangement of the atoms to create new substances, which really takes us a long way toward explaining our model. Only, we haven't really addressed energy yet. <laughs> well, not really that kind of energy. <laughs> Remember how we observed heat, light, and movement escaping from the flame as the ethanol burned? Well, this energy can't really just come from nowhere, because that would actually violate another one of our rules. Energy can't be created or destroyed! So the last thing we have to do here is explain where this energy came from. Well, if we look at the reactants, the ethanol in particular, we'll find some carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds. Remember, those are high-energy bonds. But in our products, the carbon dioxide and water, we see no high-energy bonds. So this leaves us with a very important question. What was happening to the energy during the reaction? What do you think? To help explain what's happening to the energy during this reaction, we're going to use a helpful visual aid. We'll use these little red pipe cleaners to represent energy. And this energy was stored in the ethanol. 
a little like how the fuel in a vehicle stores the energy that runs that vehicle. <laughs> we can call this chemical energy, energy that is stored. And we can keep track of the chemical energy if we wrap these pipe cleaners around all the carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds. Now there are additional forms of energy besides chemical, such as heat, motion, and light. And we observed these different types of energy when we burned the ethanol. So our explanation really isn't complete until we show this conversion from chemical energy into these other forms of energy, such as heat, light, and motion. So we can treat chemical energy as part of the reactants and these other forms of energy as part of the products. So if we're really being truthful with our model, we should see the pipe cleaners both on the left and on the right side of this reaction. The energy was never created or destroyed, it just changed forms. At the beginning of this video, we set out with one major goal. Let's review that goal and see how you did. After watching this video, you should now be able to use a chemical reaction to explain what happens to matter and energy when ethanol burns. If you don't think you can do that, go back and watch the parts of the video that you don't understand. But remember, science is not just about answers, it's also about questions. So at this point, what kinds of questions do you still have about what we saw? Here are some interesting questions that we came up with. What is the role of oxygen when something burns? What substances besides ethanol have carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds? Where did the chemical energy stored in the ethanol originally come from? Until next time, remember, you can learn anything.